I wanted to make a quick video about quantum gates because uh, this is something we're working on on the exam and there's been a few people who have asked a couple questions. Uh, so I'm going to define quickly the Toffoli gate, Toffoli gate, uh, and then look at its classical implementation and then do one example of how we might use that to build a classical, build a quantum example, a quantum version of a classical circuit. Uh, so the only real difference is the notation. If you ignore the notation, it's exactly the same as everything we have been doing. So we have the Toffoli gate looks like this. This is a complement. And that complement activates only if both of these are one. So we notate this like this. And one of the places where people get confused is in the traditional quantum notation, we put little primes there to show like the affected version of that line. But really these aren't inversions, these are just like the next version of that. So if we ignore those for a second and just say this is A, B, C coming in, A, B, C going out, then what is C depending on A and B? And we can say that C will be flipped if A and B are both one. So the classical notation for this is that C equals A, B, A and B have to be one together, and if they are, then we flip C. Now, one place people might be confused is why is exclusive OR equaling the flip? Well, let's look at exclusive OR. Let's look at it with X and Y, and then uh, our output, say, Z. If X and Y are like this, then the output Z is like this. That's exclusive OR. This is also, we can call it controlled complement. If we look at the top half of the truth table, if X is zero, then Z is the same as Y, right? If X equals zero, uh, okay, I think we're back. And yeah, and then if X is one, Z is the same as the opposite of Y, right? If X is one, then Z is the opposite of Y. So we call it controlled complement. We flip if X is one, we don't flip if X is zero. Exactly the same here. We flip if A and B are one together, we don't flip if either of them are zero. So then if we wanted to make a uh, classical exclusive OR gate, all we have to do is set one of these to one, and then the other two behave like an exclusive OR gate, right? If we set A equal one, then C just equals B exclusive OR C, because the one goes away. So we set A equal one, and in quantum notation, we want to have it with the uh, superposition, but it doesn't really matter, because we're not really dealing with superpositions in this example. Uh, so we set one of them equal to one, and then we set B, and then C is complemented, right, if A and B are in that way. So then C, this output here is B uh, exclusive or C. And that's fine, because we want to change B. We want to leave, we want, sorry, we want to change C. We want to leave B unaffected, it's unaffected, and then this one is one, it just stays as one, okay? So that is an exclusive or gate. If we wanted to make another example, like for example, let's say we want to make A, uh, B bar. So this is A and B bar. So we have an AND gate here, right? And we can implement an AND gate. We already saw in the example, we can implement an AND gate looking like this. If we set this to A and this to B, then if these are both one together, then zero flips to one. And if either of them are zero, zero stays as zero. So this ends up being a, B. A and B have to be one together for this to be one. If either of them are zero, that's zero, which is exactly the same as uh, our AND logic. So this implements AND. If we want A AND not B, first we have to invert B, and then we have to AND it together. So how do we do an inversion? Well, an inversion is just um, putting both A and B as one, and then C will always flip to C bar. Uh, because if A and B is one, then that is a one exclusive or with C, which means it flips. So here's an inversion. If we set these both to one, then 
whatever is on, let's call this uh, Q, uh, will become Q bar. So that's an inversion. And this is an and, uh, this is an XOR. And this is an AND. So those are all simple ways to do some of our classical gates. Now let's do a B bar. First, we want to invert B. So we have a couple of control uh, lines, a couple of ancillary bits that are starting by being sent to one. We use those to flip our B. So there's B. Now it's B bar. Great. Now we're going to end that to A. So again, we have our A coming in. We can still use any of these ancillary bits. And looks like this one. So B and A together are anded together. So we'll just draw that like that. And then our output will come here. If we start it with zero, then the output will be A, B bar, right? It's A and then B bar. And both of those have to be true to flip the zero to one. So that's our done. That's our output. We're done. Now all we have to do is make sure we've made no changes to our inputs, right? Because A, B bar doesn't change inputs. All it does is change the output, okay? Oh, I'm running out of room here. There we go. A, B bar doesn't change the input. All it does is change the output. So we want to change that output. Now we've got that output. That's what we want. But we have to put B back the way it was. So we use these to flip B. We can use them to flip it again. So we have B, and then we have B bar, which we use here, and then we flip it back to B. We have to flip it back because if we don't, then the quantum gate may or may not work properly, right? The whole point of this is to make, is to not measure any of these inputs uh, so that they can maintain whatever superposition we're looking at and only measure the output that we're actually interested in. So this is a quantum circuit that performs A, B, bar. And that's really all there is to it in terms of what I'm expecting on the exam. Uh, I will give you the implementation for AND and NOT. I will give you the gate and the classical definition. And your job will be to draw some circuit like this uh, that implements whatever function I ask for. Keeping in mind that we can pull exclusive or out fairly easily. We can pull and out fairly easily. We can pull not out fairly easily. Or is a little different. Uh, why don't we just do or? Uh, because that's uh, a good proof that everything works the way it should. So if we want to implement A or B, oops, A or B, we know that this is the same as A bar, B bar, all bar. That's De Morgan, right? We can take A bar, uh, A or B, and we can invert both inputs and the output, and we know that De Morgan tells us that this is, if we take this bar in, it'll be A bar, B bar. And when we take this bar in, we flip the and to or, and we have to complement the inputs, and we know that that's equal to A bar, A or B. So that's easy. Right, De Morgan tells us that. So this is what we're going to implement in quantum gates because we don't actually know how to do an OR gate yet, but we know how to do this. We know how to invert inputs and invert the output and do an AND. So let's do all of that. It'll be a bit bigger, but it'll be great. So we'll have A and B, and we want to invert these. So first thing we're going to do is invert A. Uh, we're going to build a couple of control inputs. We're going to make them both one, which forces A to be inverted, right? Because A flips only if both of these are one. We're gonna do that with B as well. Same control points are fine. Now we've got A bar, we've got B bar. Now we just have to and them together, right? And we know uh, from our little note here that if we wanna and them together, we just say A and B on the inputs and a zero on what will eventually be the output because then this will be true, or a 1, if A and B are both 1, because if they're both 1, that'll flip to 0 to 1. So we make an AND here. We take A and B, and we're going to bring those down into another bit that starts at 0 and becomes A bar, B bar, all bar, which is the same as A or B, which is our target. So that's done. Now all we have to do is undo the changes we made to A and B so that they don't get messed around with. And the tradition in, in doing these quantum circuits is to do them in the reverse order to see that it's all symmetrical. So we'll put B back where it came from first. I didn't mean to fill that in, sorry. This is B. And then we'll put A back where it came from. And then we're done. 
Now we need these two control lines because we're using Toffoli bits. In the real world, we've got a thing called a C naught, which is a single ancillary line and a complement. And this makes flipping things much easier. But for now, all we have is Toffoli gates because part of the point of this exercise is to show that Toffoli gates can be classically considered universal. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you the preparation you need.